We are legacy. We are a sisterhood. We are undaunted. We are number one. We are Spelman Knights. And this is Spelman College. Hi. I'm Helene Gale, the 11th president of Spelman College, the leader in the education of women of African descent. My name is Chandler Nadal, a senior English major from Washington, D.C. at Spelman College, and I serve as the 81st president of the Spelman Student Government Association. So the Innovation Lab opened my eyes to all the possibilities available to me. I had taken a coding class prior to Spelman, and it was always curated for white men. And so for me, that was, I didn't see myself in that space at all because I didn't see myself represented. And so coming to Spelman and being in a space where I have access to laser cutters, 3D printing, and seeing black women making things that they were passionate about, life-changing. I turned down Harvard and UC Berkeley. Young people are choosing to be in a place that nurtures them, that recognizes who they are in the world. I'm able to, you know, look around and feel like the people around me understand me. I chose to teach at Spelman so that I could not just teach and, you know, encourage the next generation to achieve their goals, but I was really hoping to find a niche to encourage and contribute to the next generation. It's important for Spelman to go beyond to the community because this is the first time that Spelman will have opened its doors to the whole village. There is something that I will tell you that is deep in my gut around um, taking on big challenges. I, I'm, I'm not afraid of those, and I think I gained that at Spelman College. Friends, we are still on the verge of history, and the best is yet to come. I was so thrilled to find out that I'd received the W. Johnson Roundtree Scholarship. Attending college on a full ride was always a dream of mine, and it was made possible through the donations of Patty Quillen and Reed Hastings. In my time at Spelman so far, I've been able to dedicate my time to opportunities that I never thought were possible due to the freedom that comes with not having to worry about the finances of my education. One of the experiences that's been a highlight of my journey at Spelman is the Target HBCU Design Challenge. In 2022, I applied to Target's annual competition in which HBCU students can submit their artwork for a chance to be featured in the 2023 Black History Month collection. This year, I was one of three winners from HBCUs around the country, and my design was sold on t-shirts, notebooks, and onesies as part of the Black History Month collection in February. I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't come to Spelman, and I'm so thankful that I was given the opportunity. Having the space to learn, grow, and thrive in an environment as enriching as Spelman as a W. Johnson Roundtree Scholar is something that I truly appreciate. The benefits of this scholarship will continue to have a positive impact on my life in my college career and beyond. So the Center for Black Entrepreneurship is a partnership between Spelman, Morehouse, and the Black Economic Alliance with the goal of closing the opportunity gap between black entrepreneurs and capital and commercial markets, creating a new cadre of black entrepreneurs. And creating more successful entrepreneurs is critical to closing the wealth gap in the country. It currently stands at 13 to 1. So for every $1 of black wealth, uh, white Americans have $13. When we look at business owners and entrepreneurs, that gap closes to three to one. So the Center for Black Entrepreneurship will have a direct impact on the economic uh, trajectory of Spelman women. So what we wanna do at the CBE is impact students' attitudes, behaviors and beliefs about entrepreneurship to create this new class of entrepreneurs who can close the gap. And we want to thank Bank of America for their funding in this area. I remain committed to donating to Spelman for the past 50 years because Spelman first gave so much to me. First it gave me a Spelman mom who brought me on campus when I was five years old to see my first live theater. She also 
by example, showed me that you give back to the schools that you love. Spelman has just given me so much in terms of personal relationships, and I dare not end without saying Spelman has given me lifelong friends, particularly in the fabulous class of 1974. But it doesn't matter because Spelman has also given me a network across this country. All you have to say is that you went to Spelman and people will support you. So why do I give to Spelman? I give to Spelman because Spelman gave to me. We are pleased that you're joining us here for the success of our Spelman Ascends campaign. As you all know, our goal was to raise $250 million and we exceeded this goal by raising $339 million. This is the most successful campaign in the history of Spelman College and cause for celebration. Today, we will hear from our president, our board chair, and our president emerita to celebrate the success of this historic campaign. Thank you for your ongoing support and enjoy the program. Hi, good afternoon, uh, and welcome everyone to the Spellman Ascends virtual campaign celebration. Now, I know we would all love to be together, but with everyone's complicated schedules in today's world, we wanted to make this a celebration that as many people as possible were able to join and didn't have to think about the complexities of travel. Today is really such a, a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to celebrate this incredible campaign. Just thanks you, Jesse, to kicking off uh, this campaign and for all that you and your team did to make this such a successful campaign. I'm pleased to be joined today by our board chair, Roz Brewer, and my predecessor, Dr. Mary Schmidt Campbell. It's wonderful to be with both of you on this incredible, incredible day. Uh, also want to give special thanks to Rhonda Stryker and uh, Gwen Adams Norton for their role as campaign vice chairs. We couldn't have done it without you. And a shout out to the campaign executive committee, trustees, volunteers, alumni, individuals, corporations, foundations, and just plain friends who all did so much to make this campaign so successful. Lastly, but not least, I also want to thank and acknowledge our faculty, our staff, and students for your role in supporting this campaign, and for those of you who are joining us live in Atlanta. You know, the African adage says, it takes a village. That is exactly what the Spelman community is. It is a true village a, a village of love, a village of sisterhood. And because of the support of all of you, we have managed to exceed our campaign goal of 250 million by raising $339 million. Wow, a lot to celebrate. So uh, I, I have the honor and privilege of having it up. And by the way, I don't know who's out there in Atlanta, but please applause. I mean, you know, this is an a, a occasion definitely for celebration. So we'll do our virtual applause and hopefully those who are gathered in Atlanta have a chance to um, applaud each other and this incredible accomplishment. So for a few minutes, I just want to talk a bit about the campaign. And it's always easy when you're done with a campaign that's so successful um, to make it look easy. But of course, campaigns never are, and there's always uh, a beginning and the end. So Roz, maybe asking you as board chair, why did you think it was important for us to do this campaign? Yeah. And what did it mean for you? Sure, so first of all, I'm glad to be here and to uh, be on screen with you two wonderful leaders of the college. Um, but you know, in reflection on this whole campaign, what was important to me was to recognize that this college does so much 
to manage just the ongoing budget of the college. And um, many of you all who are close to the college know that we have a very strong financial team there at the college, strengthened by our board leadership in Ted Aronson and the Finance Committee. And they do a fantastic job just managing day to day. But the college is very tuition based in terms of how it you know, maintains its structure. And being able to raise money and increase the endowment and then see the endowment churn as it does, we need this for long-term investment. You know, we do a fine job of managing the day-to-day, -day, but this is something different when you can come together and align the resources that you need to fulfill your strategy through long-term growth and investments from friends of the college, trustees, and alums. And it's, it's a fantastic time for us to think about what the college needs next. So, Dr. Campbell, um, you know, you were kind of the vision behind this. Uh, you thought carefully about what this campaign should look like, what are the areas um, that we needed to focus on. So could you say a bit about the thinking that went into the Ascend campaign and, you know, what you, went, what you most wanted out of this as you thought through uh, moving into this campaign? Our, our central inspiration for this campaign were the Spelman students. Uh, you saw in that video how absolutely extraordinary they are. They have ambition, determination, they're visionaries themselves. So we knew that we needed a campaign that was going to first and foremost, make it possible for them to come here to Spelman and also to succeed. And that also meant finding ways of supporting the extraordinary faculty who are at Spelman. They work incredibly hard. They have very rich research agendas and creative agendas, and we needed to make sure that they were being supported as well. We needed to make sure that this was going to be a college for the 21st century. And so that meant really to take a hard look at things like our technology infrastructure, how that works to support our students, to support learning and teaching. We had to take a look at our facilities and make sure that we had the right kinds of facilities to really make possible an environment for excellence. And we had to be prepared to do whatever it took to make sure that our students were going to be competitive in a 21st century workforce. So all of those things uh, drove that uh, strategic plan that we created. And so from the board perspective, Roz, um, obviously there were numeric targets, there was a goal in mind, but what were yes. some of the other things that the board thought about and what were some of the other goals that you had from a board perspective? First of all, I would say that this board was very excited to support Mary's uh, vision for the college. And that's where it all starts. Um, if you can get the board to engage with the direction the president is heading in, the strategic vision is very clear and it's bought into, it was easy for us as trustees to step up. And so we did have numeric targets, but one thing about our numeric targets is that it starts with who this board is um, just from the very beginning. And um, we're pleased to say that every year, uh, we close out our year with each one of our trustees having given something in that year. So we get 100% um, of, of a donation, some donation from each one of our trustees every year we close the financial year out. So when it's time to step up during a campaign, it's an easy conversation with this group. This is a fantastic, very generous, very motivated, very much aligned with the students of the college and our whole entire brand. And I believe, you know, in this campaign, we probably either brought ourselves or through our Rolodex and our other contacts, you know, we, we have a, a, a numeric charge to do at least 50% of this campaign. We wanted to have come from the trustees either giving or getting on their behalf. And we supported Mary all along the way, travel, contacts, um, celebrating along the way. and. Um, we actually had a lot of fun with it at the same time. <laughs> Not everybody talks about a campaign as fun. So that's that's great. Um, and I think the the role that the board played and the 100 percent giving and all that people did to open up uh, friendship circles and all the rest uh, just 
uh, so wonderful to have that kind of alignment with the board and the president and, and the rest of the college. You know, um, Mary, you mentioned Ascend and the strategy and, you know, at its best, a campaign works to fund a strategy that, that creates a vision for the future, as you said. Could you say more about the strategy and how that fit into the overall campaign and, and what the particular areas were that uh, will now be possible because of the campaign? Sure, but, but before I do that, Dr. Gail, I just wanna echo everything that Roz just said. Um, I, I, I always say I had the best board chair in the entire world. Um, and I was very lucky to have her during my entire seven years and the best board anybody could ever ask for. And that, that, that really gives, gave the, the campaign this extraordinary foundation uh, because we could then go out to others and we can engage everybody knowing that we had this solid block of support of our board chair and our board behind us. And I also just wanted to, to reinforce the sense of joyfulness. It was a joyful campaign. It, it wasn't easy, but it was joyful. And we, we ran into roadblocks and we just sit back and say, well, how can we get around this and we figure it out? So um, I have to say that it was, it was, all, it was a, as much about community building as it was about raising money. And, and the strategic vision was about that same kind of community building. And in fact, before we even sat down to do a strategic plan, we went around the entire campus, had small listening sessions. We had large community gatherings to talk about what our priorities should be. So when we finally came up with a plan, everybody felt good about it. We felt that these were the rear priorities. Everybody had had a voice. Of course, you can't say yes to what everybody wants, but everybody had a voice. And so the plan that we came up with was something that reflected not just the president's office, but the community of Spelman. And, and, and when I talk about the students being at the core of it, we know that one of the biggest financial barriers to, to coming to an elite college is financial. And I thought it was interesting that one of the students who said that, uh, Cadence, I believe it was, who said that she had rejected Harvard and UC Berkeley came because she was the recipient of the Dovey Johnson Roundtree Scholarship that was provided by Patty Quillen and Reed Hastings. And that was very important to be able to make it possible for students to not think about, well, I have to go where the money is. I can go where I want to go because money is no longer as much an, 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 an object. And we increased full scholarships by 325%. The support of faculty, it, it is really in the classroom where the action takes place. In the classroom and the ties that are, are created between the faculty member and potential research opportunities of um, really make, setting the bar high for students, but then reaching out and making sure they have a way to reach that bar. And we wanted to make sure that our faculty were well supported. And so that became an absolutely critical part of this campaign. And that meant getting more endowed scholarships, that meant getting faculty development funds, that meant getting uh, research opportunities for faculty. Sometimes that came in the form of partnerships with other institutions. So that faculty support was critical to our, not only our recruitment of new faculty, but the retention of our really superb faculty at Spelman. And the idea that in the 21st century, technology is no longer an accessory, but it's absolutely essential to the way the business part of the school is run, but also essential to the teaching and learning aspects, and also part of the content of the workforce that our students are going to be joining. So we had to have a technology infrastructure that was absolutely uh, geared up for the 21st century. And that really meant a com almost complete overhaul of, of the way our technology was organized, um, of the networks that we used, 
um, of the equipment that we had available. So that, that was an extremely important uh, reality for us to face as an institution. The notion also that any liberal arts college is not going to have perhaps as many research opportunities as a research one institution. So we found that it was very important to make sure that we were on the cutting edge academically and educationally to have critical partnerships. So a partnership with the Broad Institute for biomedical research or the University of Pennsylvania Medical School. So our students could begin um, research during the summer as sophomores and juniors in preparation for medical research was important with corporations like IBM to do uh, quantum computing and or with the uh, Department of Defense for machine learning and AI. So we, we were absolutely aggressive in going throughout the country, private, public, corporate, academic research areas with whom we forged uh, any number of partnerships. And as you know, Dr. Gale, that continues with the Ocean X partnership that you forged. So, so this was all very important part of, of what we felt was necessary, getting back to the student to make sure that that student was supported. She had the absolute support of her faculty and she was going to be able to thrive and compete uh, in the, the 21st century workforce. And I would also add, you. Uh, some of those resources are also going to our overall infrastructure, including buildings, uh, including yes. the wonderful building that we will have named after you, the Mary Schmidt Campbell Center for Innovation in the Arts. And I, you know, I just think that is a wonderful kind of capstone to this incredible campaign. Well, you know, the funny thing is that um, in 2014, uh, Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum, who is, is my uh, predecessor, invited me to come to campus to do a consultancy for the arts because the college was thinking of building a new arts building. So that was my introduction to Spelman College. And so I'm particularly <laughs> proud that as I left Spelman, we had uh, broken ground for that new arts building. <laughs> and so I would say that's quite a legacy. And I'd like to, as a final question, ask each of you, what do you think the legacy of this campaign will be? And I'll start with you, Roz. Well, you know, it'll be a couple of things. We'll all sort of reflect on the financials of it all, you know, to come in $90 million over your campaign, to have 17,000 unique donors, and then you think about the legacy of just Mary's presence during that time. Um, that would be quite a memory. And, you know, the legacy will live on with the naming of the building. But for me personally, I would have to say it's the communities that we built during that time. And I'll share just one story with you. It was November of 2019, just before the pandemic set in. Mary and I took a trip across the West Coast and we were cold calling, knocking on doors um, to some of the top tech companies. And we came home just a couple of days before Thanksgiving, very empty handed. We had raised zero. We came home with no checks. And then the pandemic hit in January and everything we had to do was virtual. And it's very hard to raise money virtually only when uh you know people are worried about such you know critical things but it it really uh pays forward when you develop relationships over a period of time and you're thoughtful and you plan and mary was very instrumental in keeping those relationships strong during the pandemic and that's when things really start flowing so it taught me a lot about the fundraising process but it taught me more about our community and of those seventeen thousand unique donors I have to say a big shout out to my Spelman sisters because they make up a big part of that. They came through clear and nicely and well done, as well as the work that Mary and the rest of the team did. So there'll be a lot of great memories from this campaign. Great. Yeah, for, for me, I wanna pick up on that community theme, Roz, um, because the very fact that we had 17,000 unique donors and that 76% of them were small donors. 
really makes it clear that this was yes. a this was a campaign where everybody was all in. We had penny jar competitions um, among the different departments at Spelman. Um, we had people raising money at bridge parties. Um, we had everybody thought, how can I contribute? And everybody did. And, and that's why in thinking about this, the greatest legacy is that we are a community. We have tenacity, we have determination, and most importantly, we have faith. And, and that faith was manifest so beautifully throughout this entire campaign. Well, thank you. And I must say um, how pleased I am to be, to have this solid foundation to build upon, um, you know, it doesn't get any better than to take over from a predecessor who did such an incredible job <laughs> and laid such a foundation. It has made such a difference for all of us. And you know, it, this is just a wonderful opportunity to, to thank you, thank the board, all and, and everyone who was part of this campaign that I think is going to continue to propel us to greater and greater heights as Spellman. So thank you so much for this. I think we are supposed to do a toast. Uh, so yes. everybody got there. <laughs> Oh, I, you know, I, I was the one I was instructed that I was supposed to pop this on. <laughs> so oh boy. I, will, I will pop my. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations. Cheers. Onward, Congratulations Spellman. Congratulations to Spellman. Con congrats. To Spellman.